Pakal Bank Ghana has reported a 115% rise in nine months of profit after tax to 64.9 million Ghana cities. The commercial bank witnessed a 39% growth in total assets and a 50% rise in their loan book. Well, joining me on the line from Accra, rather, joining me from Accra to break down these numbers is Thomas Buansi Sapong, who's the financial controller at Cal Bank. Thomas, thank you so much for making the time to join us today. Uh, before we get speak, let's just get straight into it. Maybe you can just uh, give us some context as to exactly what drove uh, this uh, profitability. Uh, the company's profitability growth is mainly driven by the off-balance sheet as terms, such as LCs and guarantees that we are having in our books. We try to improve our relationship and able to get more facilities this year. We have also been able to recruit a very good staff which are more youth and they are able to deliver their promise and they are able to fasten everything that the bank does. Uh, mainly the loan book, the off balance sheet items and the people that we have are the main drivers of the current year's performance. Mm. Uh, Thomas, can you give us an indication of how sustainable do you think this growth is and what sort of growth forecast do you see going into 2014? Actually, the, this current growth is sustainable and if you have studied our performance for the past three years, it has been increasing over 100% from 2011 it rose, the profit rose from 9 million to 18 million and to 49 million in 2012 and 2013. We have already gone up above what we made in 2012. We expect this growth to continue come next year, but not as the same percentage growth as we recorded previously, since the growth will be on a, a bigger figure. So we don't expect that as we are growing bigger now, we will grow the same percentage come next year, but it's sustainable. Mm. Now tell us, what exactly have you been uh, lending to in the, in the public sector and uh, you know, what else do you think is driving credit growth? Uh, the growth is not only on the public sector, uh, it, uh, it cut across all sectors. We have the construction sector, we have the government, and the government we do finance government projects which are also somehow construction. We also do help on the service sector of the government. And then we also have a lot of activities in the oil and gas industry in the Ghana, especially the downstream part for oil marketing organizations. Mm. Now, how active are you in Ghana's emerging um, oil economy? Uh, we are not up on the upstream oil activities, uh, looking at our balance sheet size, we are not able to partake there, but we are still trying to be able to uh, partner others by through syndication. But the downstreams, we are key drivers. We do have most of the oil marketing organization in your books as our clients. Mm. So how do you structure these uh, downstream deals? In other words, how do you, you know, how do you, uh, how do you make sure that you, you are putting in the impact of oil as well as the currency volatilities? Uh, for the downstream, the currency volatility is mainly uh, supported by the government. The oil uh, importers are promised by the government for whatever sales that they meet or whatever oil that they bring, the government promised them the rate so they don't go through the, uh, the looking for foreign currency, foreign exchange to buy the oil. It's the foreign exchange that are generated by the government that is used to support them. So uh, the currency volatility is there, but the period that they need to distribute this oil that are imported are not so wide that can uh, fluctuate their profitability, which will also affect our, our, our assets. Uh, in other words, they also have uh, an uh, agreement with the government where, depending on how the currency uh, changes, then they are covered with the differences in the currency. And 
as the government is promised to give them whatever they are entitled to based on the agreed rate as at the time the oils are imported into the country. So we are not much exposed on the foreign currency market because of the promise from the government and it has been delivered for the past as we have been with them. Mm -hmm. Thomas, looking at your loans uh, to deposit ratio, it's at 120% plus. It's quite high. Why is it so high and where do you see it over time? Uh, I see it coming down as we are looking forward for more deposits to boost our books. But that ratio basically is coming as a result of uh, a certain strategic management that we take to manage our foreign currency exposures. We much fund our foreign exposures from foreign borrowings, whereby we borrow from DFIs, that gives us foreign, cur foreign currency, and then we fund the local organization that generates foreign currency through that foreign book. So those books are not funded from our local currency depositors. They are funded from foreign currency that we borrow from foreign partners. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, you'll be, you know, with the expected increase with, uh, in minimum capital requirements, how soon do you think you could be raising your additional capital? Uh, the, we have already uh, hit the level of the minimum capital that the central bank is looking for. The new proposal that they are even talking about is 100 million Ghana cities. We are already having 100 million Ghana cities. We still have plans to increase our capital because we think that as the capital increase, our base increase, and we are able to do biz bigger business as well. But for the capital as the central bank is looking for, we are already there. So there's no uh, problem for that. Thomas, thank you so much uh, with that insight on those third quarter earnings. That was uh, Thomas Buansi Sapong, who's the financial controller at Calbank.